This is a Section 504 student eligibility form that was included in an article written by Perry Zirkel. And the bottom of this says 2008, but I believe it was 2009 in Teaching Exceptional Children. It's an article that we have you read for class. I like this form because it incorporates all of the elements um, that are in the law in terms of making a determination of eligibility for a student and Section 504. A district or state that you work for or other entity might use a different form, but it would likely include all of these elements. So let's walk through really quickly um, and talk about what some of those are. First, there are people. Um, and there need to be people who have knowledge of the student, knowledge of the meaning of the evaluation data, and knowledge about accommodations and placement options. So who are some of the people that might be included in James 504 plan? Or not the 504 plan, but the student eligibility form. Well, one person, um, the hospital homebound teacher. They certainly have knowledge of the student. Um, they'll know something about the evaluation data. And they probably know something about accommodations and placement options because somebody who's doing hospital homebound work or helping students transition back and forth between school and hospital likely have some experience with kids who need 504s or are determining schools that are determining eligibility for 504. Um, who else should be there? Well, a special education teacher, in this case, because they are the 504 coordinator, so they are going to have some knowledge of accommodations and placement options. And they probably don't know the student very well because James has not been in special education services. But they may be able to evaluate some of the data. We're also going to bring in a general education teacher because they will have knowledge of the student. And we're going to bring in the principal who will have knowledge of the student. And then we're going to bring in, going to bring in one extra person that's not already listed here. We're going to bring in a school psychologist because they're likely to have information um, about accommodations and placement options and also be able to help us with evaluating the data or looking at the data. They'll have some ability to interpret evaluation data for us. We need to specify the kinds of data that we're going to use, and we're going to use teacher recommendations, and we're going to use medical records. We also have to specify the type of impairment. Um, in this case, we'll just write that it was a um, Broken right wrist and leg. Whoop. And I think he lost a kidney. Now we have to determine one or more major life activity that has impacted by this physical impairment. And I think it's pretty clear that for James it's going to be walking and performing manual tasks. Something that was new in the reauthorization in 2004 of ADA um, 
was this inclusion of substantial impairment or at least through some lawsuits it is suggested that we be more specific about the degree to which the impairment affects the major life activity and the law says it's supposed to be substantial so clearly there's some argument between some folks who are saying there was a child whose impairment was not impacting them substantially and some folks who said it was so the team is asked to with this form what Zirkel did with this form was include a nice scale here and say you have to decide as a group without the considering the effects of mitigating measures so we don't consider that he already has a wheelchair we don't consider that James might already have uh, a computer we, without those things without ad, the additions um, and any accommodations already being made to what degree does the impairment affect the major life activity um, and if it is at the substantial level then the child qualifies for a 504 and in this area is where you can write down your reason for saying substantially one of the things I like about this form is that it does incorporate all of the elements of eligibility for 504 and it does it in a way that asks the team to make decisions and, and asks the team to actually get something done. Um, I think good forms are important um, in promoting good policy. The next thing we'll do is we'll take a look at a 504 planning form.